Hello there and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by Zappysys. In this video we're going to cover how to load data from some source into a Salesforce database using custom Zappysys components. As always these are custom components you'll be able to use once you download and install the SSIS Power Pack and you can get that by going to zappysys.com hovering over products SSIS Power Pack and download the free trial and I'll be sure to post a link for this in the description below. So let's get started. In Visual Studio, you could create a new project using the integration services template. I'm just going to add to an existing project that I have. So I'm going to right click, create a new package, and immediately, as always, you'll see all of the ZS custom components in the toolbox on the left. And if you go to the data flow pane, you'll see even more custom components there. So in this video, we're going to eventually put data into a Salesforce database. So we need some connection to it. So let's right click in the connection manager at the bottom and make a new connection. So here are all the standard ways you can connect. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to use the custom Salesforce connector. And I'm going to say add. I'm going to put my user. I'm going to put my password and I'm going to put my token. Salesforce requires a token for a user. It's kind of like an API key. You should be able to get that in your Salesforce account or if you reset your Salesforce password, it should email you your new token. I'll also post another link in the description below with a little more info on what it is and how to get it. So I'm going to test my connection. It works. Okay, great. So first I'm gonna drag a data flow task. And then in the data flow task, we're gonna say what we want. Actually, let's name it first, and I'm gonna call this one insert, Salesforce insert. So in the data flow task, let's go get our source. So this could be a SQL Server database, this could be a Postgres database, it could be anything. I'm gonna use a flat file that I've created on my desktop. So I have three of them, new, update, and upsert. We're going to use each of them. The first one is this new option. He just has four rows of basic information. It has a name, a city, and a primary key. So back in Visual Studio, we're going to use this custom Zappysys CSV source. So let's drag that to the data flow and let's open it up. So the first thing you'll notice is a whole lot of configuration and options. And don't forget, that's because this is also used with web APIs or files. We're using the very basic version of just a flat file. So we're going to go pick our CSV. We're going to say, OK. The component scans our data and looks at the sizes of things and kind of makes an assessment to say, hey, I'm going to make some room in case there's bigger fields or attributes later. How does that work? Is four times enough? I'm going to say yes. So now we can go and grab our custom Salesforce destination. So let's connect our CSV to our destination and let's go configure it. So we'll pick our Salesforce connection that we made and we're going to go to the component properties tab. All the way at the bottom we're going to see our table name. We have to specify where we want to put the data from our flat file. It's account data, so I'm going to pick the account table. This operation field is the other super important field I want to talk about. Right now we're going to just use insert, but if you remember I have a couple of CSVs, we're going to come back and do some other options with the update and update or insert. But for right now we'll leave it with insert. One more thing to point out is this enable bulk API mode. So don't forget, we're using it just for a flat file, but you could use this component to get data from an API. And when you do, you're going to do chunks of 200 rows at a time. So if you only have about a thousand rows, that's not that bad to go get 200 rows, load it, 200 rows, load it. But if you have, say, millions of rows, that's not going to be super efficient. You definitely want to enable this enable bulk API mode and it will retrieve all the data and load it into a buffer and should help with efficiencies. The same with this enable parallel processing mode. He should enable some multi-threading, so again, it could help with some efficiencies. We're just going to leave it as is because we only have four rows, and we're going to go to the column mappings tab. 
So you'll notice the account table in Salesforce has a lot of columns and that makes sense because Salesforce is pretty robust. We only had three columns and two of them are mapped. This account name isn't, so we'll just drag it over. The file name, we're not worried about that. So we'll click OK. We'll run our package and it should load our four rows from our CSV into our Salesforce destination. Perfect, super easy. But like I said, that's just one way and there's those other update and upsert options I wanna show you. So let's go back on our control flow. I'm gonna disable this one and I'm gonna drag another one. And this one, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go grab my custom CSV source, but in this case, I'm gonna grab my update. Same thing, you wanna make room? Yes, I do. And this file, you'll see it has an ID, a name, and a city. So it just has two rows of existing data. So let's come back in here and add our Salesforce destination, connect our source. But in here, instead of picking the insert option, I wanna pick the update option. And this is gonna go and find existing rows with this information. And if it exists, I'm gonna update it. So I'm gonna say, go look in the account table and update these rows. So our ID is mapped, our name is mapped, and our billing city is mapped. Okay. So now when we run this, it will update the existing rows in the Salesforce database with the data from our CSV. Boom, two rows, super easy. There's one more version that I wanna show you, and we'll rename this one Salesforce update. We'll disable him and we'll add one more. And this one we're going to call upsert. So, so in this upsert file, we have a name, a billing city, and a primary key. And in this instance, we're going to pick an option that says, go look for this in the target. And if it exists, update it with this information. If it doesn't exist, add it as a new row. So we're doing an insert and an update at the same time. So let's come into the data flow. Let's add our same CSV source. Let's go pick our upsert CSV. Let's add our Salesforce destination. And this time, when we pick the upsert option, there's gonna be one more requirement. It's gonna to need to know the upsert key field. What field am I looking for in Salesforce to know if this row already exists or not? That's why we have to specify this particular field. Um, if you don't know how to make this field or what it is, I'll add another link in the video description below with a little more information on that. So now one more time on the mappings, we're gonna say our name, billing, primary key. In this instance, we're gonna say run. And he should have three rows either inserted or updated. You know what, I wanna show one more feature that you might wanna add these trash destinations. So in this instance, one of those rows was inserted, but now they all exist. So now if I can keep running this same package over and over again, and it will just update those three rows. I'm gonna add this trash destination to show me what three rows were updated. Now in this destination, you could say save data to a text file, 
And you might want to use this if you're trying to create some audit log of the data that you're updating or inserting into your database. So now this time when I run this package, it will show me three rows updated. And here it shows me three rows updated. So again, I just wanted to briefly mention that because it could be helpful if you want to use it for some audit logs. And that's really it. Hopefully you saw how flexible and easy it is to use custom Zappisys components and you're able to get data from something like a flat file and either insert it, delete it, or update it in a Salesforce destination. And don't forget, like I said, the CSV is just one way you can get data. You could also get it from another database or some other source. If you haven't already downloaded the Power Pack, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget the link is in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Zappisys YouTube channel to get more updates and SSIS tips and tricks in the future.